In this video, I'll be going through the Criterion C Strand 1 section of my design e-portfolio report that managed to score me a 7 out of 7. So for Criterion C Strand 1, we can see in the uh, rubrics, it says that the student should be constructing a logical plan which outlines the efficient usage of time and resources sufficient for peers to be able to follow to create the solution. So in order to create a logical plan, you create steps with descri uh, descriptions for how you will create it, include resources for all steps, and include time for all steps. So let's take a look at my report and how I've done it. So the first thing that I decided to include was my timeline that I used to create my product. So this timeline is not for your entire design report making, but just for the product making. You can choose to create the timeline however you like, but this is how I created my timeline. I created a Gantt chart in which I listed the, all the tasks at the side, and I gave simple um, descriptions for the task in a spreadsheet. And I included the duration and number of days that each task will estimately take. So it's a timeline for to plan for making the solution, not one you make after, not one you make after the solution has been created already. And, and then I include the starting date and the end date, which I um, color the boxes at the side here. So this is basically just a timeline that you should be including in order to plan for your um, product making. You can refer to the way that I created my task descriptions, but it entirely depends on what you, the product, what you're making, what your product is. And after creating the Gantt chart, you should be breaking down the tasks more specifically because the task you write is sort of just simple in the Gantt chart. But you want to break down on for each task, exa what exactly is the task about? What's the purpose of the task? In this task, what will you be doing? And what's the significance of the task? So you need to expand on what the task is at first and expand on what it is. And what's the purpose of doing it? And what's the significance of doing that task in relation to creating your product? That's what you include in this explanation section of the table. And you should also be including resources or tools and materials that you'll be required to create to follow that one step. So for me, I separated the resources and to, um, that I'll need into tools and materials. Materials, things that um, disappear once you use it. Tools, just things that help you utilize the materials to create your product. So my first one, referring to my Criterion B final sketch, because that's where, that's the final sketch I created after receiving all my survey, my respondents. And so I annotated my sketch according to the Access FM to see what features I want my product to have. So I'll have to refer to that in order to know the design specifications of my product. And then I'll have to gather research from Criterion A. Uh, if you remember, in the last strand, you'll be recording your research results, which in which some questions are significant for the specific creation of the product. And after that, we'll be gathering the materials in order to make your product. So here, uh, gathering the materials. And then the steps following this are very specific to your product, but you can refer to the way that I organized the table and how I separated between materials and tools and how I uh, explain my tasks. How I explained it is sort of to make it so that it sequences well, so that when you read all of them together, it feels like I'm explaining the entire process making, but it's separated well in a table with different tasks. So it's easier to understand and logically follow. This is so that other people can look at it and also follow it as well. So that's what um, I did here towards the very end. And another thing to make um, the process easier for me and for other people when they look at my process making, if they want to make my product, they should be able to make it as well, looking at what I do, is I created flowcharts. So for me, my product consists of quite a few parts. It's not one entire thing. It consists of 3D origami cranes, and that it consists of a brochure, as well as a toy stand and all of them 
uh, integrating together to create my final solution. So I have quite a few of the uh, quite a few flow charts, but one is perfectly sufficient. So the way I create the flow chart is I use these um, symbols. So um, this symbol represents the starting and ending of a flow chart, and rectangular uh, shapes represent um, doing certain tasks, uh, which are quite objective in which there's no option when doing the task, it's just doing it. But when you come across these diamond shapes, it's when uh, during the process, there's an option that you may fulfill and there may be a problem that you may face. So you sort of predict these beforehand and you create a flow chart such that you kind of think of, you kind of think of the problems that may occur. And you use that to um, sort of see, okay, if this happens, then what else can I do? And you prepare for that so that you can still continue with the process making of your flowchart, even when problems arise. And if there's no problems, you continue according to the intended plan. So this is so that it's easier for, for you and other people to follow in case that other problems occur. And generally, you should... One thing when doing the flowchart is try to make it so that the words are quite big, they're bolded if possible, so that it's easier to see the words. If you have such a long flowchart, it's okay to separate them into, uh, into more than one flowchart because it's important for the examiner to be able to see it more than for it to be in one picture. Um, just be careful to see whether you have enough space for that but it's important for the examiner to be able to see it. And that's all I did for Criterion C strand one. Now, if we were to go back to the criteria, we can see that I created steps with descriptions on how I'll create my product. So I did this through a timeline and I explained the time, each task in my timeline with the resources, the tools and materials needed. And yeah, I included resources for all steps and include time for all steps. So this is organized very well in a Gantt chart where you explain it further. The only thing that's sort of not included here is the need for flow charts, which will be very helpful in scoring in this strand. So you would be able to score seven out of seven for strand one. Thank you for watching.